Otter, the uh, December is it, uh, 17th, 17th uh, meeting of the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, first uh, case we have on the agenda tonight is case number 1515, which is uh, uh, Reading Cooperative Bank, 180 Haven Street. The parties are here tonight. Yes, okay. Let me uh, read the uh, legal notice as published and we'll go from there. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at the Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Thursday, December 17, 2016, at 7 p.m. On the petition of Ed Jaraliquitz, okay, <laughs> uh, Reading Cooperative Bank, who seeks a variance from Sections 8.0, 8.2.3, 8.2.6.1, of the zoning bylaws in order to install two additional wall signs and to allow the existing sign to remain on the property located at 180 Haven Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, and members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before the board is taken under oath, so if you think you may want to speak tonight on this case, please stand and raise your right hand. I swear that the testimony given by me before the board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Responses I do. I oh, okay, thank you. Would you like to start us off here and give your presentation? Yeah. My name is Brad Lathan for the record, attorney for the Cooperative Bank, who's uh, the property owner. Uh, we're here to ask that the uh, zoning board of appeals Cooperative Bank, and we're dealing with 180 Main Street, of course, uh, Reading Mass. Uh, Reading Cooperative Bank is a very unique institution. It's probably the oldest commercial establishment in the town of Reading. Uh, it's a mutual organization, meaning there are no shareholders that are involved. The customers, the depositors are, in fact, the owners of the bank. Uh, and as a consequence of that, it can provide significant community service, which has been historically over the years. Uh, it's always participating somehow in helping uh, our community. Uh, it requests relief tonight from the board in order to actually uh, allow a sign that is there now to remain. Uh, the plan is to install a sign on the front wall of the bank. The zoning bylaw says you can have a front wall sign and have a real wall sign. Uh, it's the front wall sign that's the reason for us to be here tonight. Uh, as you probably know, driving down there, there's an existing carved sign uh, over the doorway in the middle of the front door. Uh, not terribly visible. In fact, I'd like to, you know, I know you're very familiar with it, show you a picture, but it shows really how obscure that sign is. That gives rise to the bank's need to have more visibility uh, in today's commercial environment. It's important that people can know where the bank is for location purposes, but actually it's beyond that. The sign also causes people to remember that, remember the Reading Cooperative Bank when they go for financing, whatever they're going to do, but the sign creates a reminder of visibility as well. So having, having that visibility is an important component. Now, what Glenn referred the bank to before you is the fact that there'd be two walls on that front, on that front of the building the existing carved sign plus the new sign. So we can talk about either one, but the fact is that one of them by zoning has to go, and we're therefore looking for relief. And I'd like to focus, if I could, on the existing carved sign. That may be a better sign to focus on, because that could be covered up, put <coughs> plaster or something in there to eliminate the, the carvings that are involved. It would be unsightly, but that could be done. Uh, but we're looking for relief so that we can have the new sign, which can be done as a matter of right, uh, but have the, the old sign stay, the car sign stay. I'd like to point out, as I'm sure you know, that in many communities, 
uh, having carvings into brick and, and stone buildings is very normal. And, and actually, those are not counted as signs. If you were to go to downtown Malden, as an example, you see Malden Trust Company, Malden Savings Bank. Uh, the Brandt Building, in, in the Bryant Building on Reading, which is the intersection of High, uh, Shoot, and Haven Street, right down near the train station on the right-hand side, the golden tomato was a green tomato was in there now. If you look there, there was a, a sign that says Bryant uh, Building, Bryant it's called. That's never counted <coughs> as a sign. Historically, it has not been counted as a sign. Simply considered to be part of identification. So the signs that were carved in have not historically been considered as signs in calculating sign requirements. And the signage in that building doesn't count that as a sign against the signage allowed. Uh, so we're not asking you to exempt what is carved there, although I think it could be an alternative method to find relief. So make finding that that particular carving that we're trying to preserve is really part of the architecture of the building itself, which is a sign. But we're, we're here to present as an alternative uh, the actual elements for a variance. So I'd like to, if I could, go through those. Uh, and first, relating to the fact that circumstances have to relate to the structure, especially, especially in the structure, and not the general zone of the district. Uh, a sign carved into a building is unique. Uh, this isn't a wooden sign with a grouting. This is an actual carving into a stone. We think that's a unique characteristic. Uh, it's not readily visible. As you can see from the photographs, it's also a unique characteristic. And the way the building is situated on the lot and the shape of the building give rise to the fact, the ability, the obscurity of that sign itself. Traffic going down Haven Street from Main Street down the hill is, is negotiating the traffic leaving the parking lot and cars leaving and entering parking spaces on Haven Street. So drivers have a quick second to identify where the building is they're trying to go. Now, we all know where it is, but others don't know exactly where it is. And they're so busy driving and, and being safe in their driving that they don't necessarily see that little obscure sign over the front door. Uh, so that's the need for the new more visible sign. Uh, and again, the, the, the sign that's carved in is really not going to cause uh, excessive visibility as far as signage is concerned. It won't cause any kind of a, a cluster of signage. But that's the unique characteristic of this, the way it's laid out, the nature of the sign itself, and it being part of the building relief itself. And a literal enforcement would result in hardship, financial or otherwise, to the applicant. <clears throat> again, because of the angle and nature, we have to have some sort of greater visibility. Uh, and, and the fact that people won't see it without, without better signage. Uh, again, as I quickly point out, we can obscure that. They can put a piece of wood over there, they can fill it in with plaster or, or concrete. It would not be attractive. It would deteriorate from the architectural features. That whole area like the portico where you go in is one sort of monolithic <coughs> uh, stone. And to eliminate that or cover that up with some sort of a, a an uh, item that's clearly designed just to obscure a sign would be detrimental, would not be positive. I'd also like to suggest that the desired relief can be granted without detriment of the public good uh, or without derogating from the intent and purpose of zoning. Uh, as I say, again, the sign is not something that we're, this, the sign we're trying to save is not something that, that really is going to cause any kind of uh, cluster effect. Uh, and this will not uh, cause an impact uh, against the neighborhood. The sign's already there, we're trying to preserve. Uh, and I think the other feature is that, um, in, in essence, it is so unusual to have uh, carved signs within the structure itself uh, that they wouldn't cause any kind of floodgates to worry about others coming before you and looking for the same kind of relief. Because I can't think of where else in time, except the Bryant Building, perhaps, and maybe some other building that has a year of its building on it, some old brick building, uh, that is like this. So that's basically the circumstances and the relief we're looking for. And our hope is that you'll find that this would be really a de minimis effect and would grant relief as requested. And uh, Ed is here to discuss the sign aspects. And uh, <coughs> Tony is here to discuss any aspect of it. But I, as I said, I think focusing on the, the carved sign is probably the one that we specifically ask for relief for. Because the other sign can be placed there if we obscure the other sign. Thank you. We did have a memorandum from the uh, uh, code enforcement officer, Glenn Redman, on this particular case, and I will read. Uh, basically, he had a short uh, comment on it. 
Uh, he noted this proposal is to add two signs to the existing building. One sign already exists, so the total of three signs is not allowed. A variance would be required to allow three signs. That's basically what he said. Uh, sure. Sure. Just like you hear Ed Morello with some from United Sign Company. Mm -hmm. And um, just um, if any of you have come through that back parking lot, um, we've already installed a, a similar sign over that entrance, okay, that was permanent. So they do have a rear sign that looks just like the new one, okay? Okay. It is, um, it's halo lit, the letters are solid metal, and the only illumination is illumination coming out from the back. Uh, okay, to light the, the white background that we have on there too. That again is, is one method of illumination that's allowed by, by code. Um, and um, it, uh, it fits within the square footage that, that's allowed. So uh, if, if you're interested in what it looks like, if you've, you've seen, if you've come through that back parking lot, you've seen a smaller version of what we're doing there. Right. Okay. And there's, and there's actually a. Uh, uh, photograph of it rendering in the in the packet that we got. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's all. And this has um, and uh, this did go before the uh, the CPDC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we went for a master signage plan because in addition to the sign, there was a sign for Keller Williams, who was a new tenant on the second floor, and um, and we needed CPDC um, CPDC mm -hmm. approval. Uh, to get that sign, that sign is uh, is already on the building. So, right. very simple construction to what the what the the new sign will be on the front of the sign, front of the building for Reading Cooperative Bank. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions from board members, Kathleen. <clears throat> I don't have a lot of questions. The, the only real question, the sign that's there. That's remaining. That you don't want to do anything to that sign. You just want it to stay as is. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. John. Um, I guess I have a, a number of different questions. I'd have to start off by saying um, one. I lived in the community a few years. Um, I've been a depositor at Reading Co-op for over thirty-five years. Um, I've sat on this board a few years, and um, our signed bylaws um, have been, unfortunately, a thorn in everyone's side. And again, this year, apparently, it's not going to even be addressed in 2016, we hear. Um, but the problem that exists with signs in this community, um, actually, the bylaw has been reduced from 40 some odd pages down to 12 pages, but it's still the, the same character as it was before. But my question is, I guess, um, to Brad uh, initially, um, you have two other banks on Haven Street. Um, what do we do with those banks? Um, whatever we allow in one, we have to allow in others. Uh, which is the way I think the board has tried to react in the past. We want some equity here, even though the equity is not in the, in necessarily the bylaw. When the Reading Co-op was, um, how should I say, remodeled, um, it was a, a decision of the bank um, and its officers to put that carved Reading Co-op up there at that particular time. Um, <clears throat> you want signage for the back, I understand, for the parking lot. You want some signage in the front that's probably illuminated. Um, but we have to look at where everything else is in the community in terms of signage, especially on Haven Street with two other, two or three other, two, two other banks. Um, so I guess my first question is, um, where, um, I shouldn't say where, um, I'd have to ask, um, um, 
either Brad or if you have an officer of the bank. Um, where has all your new customers come from in the last five, six, seven years? The town of Reading? Um, you have you have satellite offices okay um, so most people in the in the community who are depositors who want or want to be a depositor I think they are well aware of where the Reading co-op is in your initial in your initial description of one of the criteria the first criteria most difficult one is that as you head up Haven Street, well, it's a one-way street, so as you head up, you're not going to see it in the car. You're going to be walking towards it. Uh, you probably have already parked, so you already know where the bank is. Uh, I have a little bit of a... I like Reading Co-op. I think it's because... I, I like Reading Co-op as a, as, a, as a structure. I think you did a tremendous job on the remodeling of the bank. Um, I don't think that necessarily you want to be considered a large or big bank. So you, I mean, the other cooperatives all, all around have, have been in the, in the format of, of being a community bank, which I think Reading Co-op is. Um, I worry about making a variance on a situation like this and allowing three signs. I would certainly not like to see the um, the curving at uh, the carving in the um, facade outside disappear. If it were limited to two signs and you needed to have or you're in your own in the bank's own decision they need two lit signs, one in the back and one in the front. Uh, to wipe out the carving. I think that that is, a is one of the characters of Reading Cooperative Bank. Um, so I'm not very much in favor of, of uh, looking at a variance in this situation. It's not freestanding, unfortunately. Uh, we couldn't justify it as a freestanding. Um, that's the first thing I looked at when we, when we started looking at it. But I have a concern about the three signs, especially with two other banks within 100 feet of Reading Co-op who are come, gonna come in for the same situation as we have right now. Well, Reading Co-op has three wall signs. Why can't we have three wall signs? Uh, absolutely, that's uh -huh. my question to you in a long First of all, you, you, you're correct that many customers know where the bank is. <coughs> and that's why I indicated that, of course, there are people that come here looking for a mortgage who don't know where the bank is. But the other part, as I mentioned, is that a sign isn't just for the moment. A sign is to leave an impression of people, oh, the Reading Cooperative Bank. They visualize it when they drive by every other day. So when they're looking for financing, they think of Reading Cooperative Bank. So the sign serves as a, a memory place that, to help people think of the bank as being a source of funds. That's one of the purposes, a legitimate purpose of having a sign. So it isn't just finding your way. Finding your way is important. Secondly, comparing, you have to be fair. And I, I remember this. I came before you and you had the same philosophy on gas station signage. It is appropriate to be fair. The item here, though, is unique. And the unique characteristic is how many other banks have carved in names of this size that are not visible. That's what we're trying to say. That could be covered up. The, the, the new wall sign is going up. What you are going to tell us is whether we have to do something to cover up that sign or the this way. And that, to me, seems wasteful. Um, so I think it is very distinguishable <coughs> from other banks. And some of the other banks, at least one that's right nearby, has large windows. They're allowed to have window signs. That creates a greater visibility. This bank, of the architectural characteristic, which you've complimented, has small windows, more of a colonial type of appearance. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't lend itself to having the window treatment that its competitor has. So they they can, through the use of window signs, get visibility to them. Bank of America is facing Main Street. That's an advantage of location. But I, I don't think that Allowing to leave here 
with the, the third sign being the nature of the sign, creates any kind of precedent that others can say, oh, you have three signs, we can have three signs. You have to look at what are the three signs. And that third sign is really the minimus. It's obscure. And we're just trying to save it because it's an architectural feature of the department. I want to make one correction on gratitude. It's not the board's decision to cover up that sign that's carved in there. That's the bank's and your decision if it's not if you don't get the variance. If you decide to do that, that's the bank's decision. It's not our decision. No, exactly. Uh, I, and that's why I said the bank is going to put the sign in the wall. And so what your decision affects with the bank has to cover up with the sign. I didn't mean to suggest that. You were, you were, we're telling you. Okay. I mean, I, I, if I were an architect, which of course I'm not, um, I would find a creative way to use that carved signature um, in the front um, to, to be lighted and... and uh, it doesn't have to be as large as the one in the back. I mean, everybody thinks, you know, it's allowed 72.5 square feet of signage or, or breaking it down. And reality is, no, you don't have to use 70, 70, you don't have to use the max. You can use something very much different than that, less than that, and, and, and from that, garner a tremendous, uh, a, a tremendous creative way of of um, putting your product out there I in the signage. That if we look at signs today, most of them either backlit or boosted. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a relief to them. You, when it's when it's concave, which is what this is, you can't attain that same impression. I do understand what you're saying, trying to be creative, but I think in looking at the way signs are today, backlighting is the way with LED or some mechanism or a gooseneck, and that usually has some relief to it that you pick up with the gooseneck lighting. With the recessed carving, you can't do it. That's the problem. But you do have that sign area in the front of the bank, which you could readapt. I mean, the bank decided to make that when they remodeled the bank, which I thought was an excellent way of, of creating that um, hometown-type bank, but also elevating it from just a small bank, which was, goes back <laughs> into the 50s and 60s, up to something that is uh, more modern. I think that part of the problem here is competition. I know. And competition doesn't do that. So we're trying to be comparable in that regard. Okay. Um, that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sai, questions, comments? Well, I've only lived in Reading for 11 years. I've driven down Haven Street a million times. To be honest with you, I've never even noticed that concrete sign. Never even noticed it. It's not attention getting. It doesn't, you know, unless you're looking for it, you're not going to really, hate to say it, see it. So I can understand the rationale for wanting to put something else there. One question I have is how long is that concrete sign or concrete? Logo been on there. How long? How many years? Uh, yeah, the, I think the building was remodeled in 1996, 1997. Huh? How long? 1996, 1997. That's what I, somewhere in that region. So it's been there for 20 years. Mm. Uh, you know, I can understand the concern over two or three signs. You're basically asking for one new sign because you've already done one of them, right? Mm. That's what I heard you say. So you're really for one new sign. Uh, I know it's 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 not consistent with the signage laws as they exist today. Thus, you're here, uh, and I'm having trouble finding why I should not agree in principle with what you're talking about. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that for the moment. Done. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Uh, any questions, comments? And I think the debate is really whether the existing sign is more ornamental, architectural, identifying versus commercial. And I think that that is really the issue that I think we're all kind of facing. You have to weigh the fact that, I mean, I agree with Sai that it is very subtle. It is, you know, in, as long as it's not, if it's, I don't think it's lit at night. I mean, 
So, I mean, obviously in the dark, it uh, doesn't really do anything for anyone. But, um, you know, it, it does, uh, it was put there by the petitioner. So it's not like, uh, I don't know, it's not like it's a pre-existing, you know, name of a building from a tenant that's not there. I feel like, what is it, the Charles building next door has some sort of historical significance. So, I mean, obviously they're, they're not a tenant there. Um, but I guess I, if it wasn't lit at night, and maybe you could have that be, um, you know, some sort of, um, you know, condition that we could add to the variance. Um, I'm, I mean, it's, it's, you know, the, the chalk is kind of flying up on the line here for me, but uh, I kind of lean more towards ornamental than commercial. So that's what I have to say. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I would tend to agree that the carved sign there that we're calling carved, uh, is, uh, is very difficult to see, certainly, driving down Haven Street uh, uh, at all. Uh, but I, I think a good point was brought up that it, it's, to me, it's a relatively recent sign. It's less than 20 years old. It, it was put up there, as you say, when the bank was uh, uh, reconstructed, uh, refurbished uh, back in 19, I think the cornerstone says 1996 there. So, uh, uh, to me, it's a, it's relatively new. It was put up there. I agree. It's difficult to to read. Maybe if you uh, had your druthers today, it maybe wouldn't have been done. But I, I do like it. Uh, but I, it's, it's certainly very difficult to see. Uh, I looked at the sign at the back door, and I see the pictures. It's over the back door. It, had you looked at putting a sign uh, to if you, if you don't like that carved kind of sign and find you want to obscure it or something, why couldn't you put the new sign right o right on top of it and have that backlit? H had you looked at that option at all, rather than to the to the right hand side? Uh, it, it, granted, it may not be the exact size that you had originally envisioned for the front. It looks like it would maybe be more the size in the back, and and I would imagine too that which one of the reasons is you want your new logo up there. You have a logo, you'd like to add that to the sign, and that's what I was wondering. Why why couldn't that just go right over the Reading Cooperative cast in or the Cobb sign? And that, that was not looked at. Okay, so, so maybe that's uh, something that you could the do. From, yeah, from um, Julie uh, Farrell. Um, was looking for a sign on the wall. One of the difficult, one of the things is you don't you, any foot traffic coming up, up the street. Right. Doesn't see that at all. Whereas, okay. All right, B because it's facing. When you say facing, foot, foot traffic, yeah, coming uh, Haven coming Street. Up Haven Street wouldn't see wouldn't see uh, that at all. Up Haven Street from the depot or, or yes. from Main Street. Okay. Driving yeah, down. I don't think it would see it no matter which, right. if it was over the that, front door, which is kind of that, that's a... That's why uh, they want to put it on yeah, the wall. Yeah, it, it's kind of an angle right. out from, from the building, the front of the building. You wouldn't see it from com coming up from the depot on Haven. You wouldn't see it, yeah, e either one, you wouldn't see coming up. Uh, it's only only coming in from the Main Street side. But Haven Street's one way <coughs> anyway with traffic. Yeah, pedestrian traffic would see it, mm -hmm. but... I, I wasn't involved in the decision process, but it would seem to me that that would detract from the architectural feature of that, the way that foyer is an entrance way. <laughs> so, I mean, I know it's uh, aesthetic, but... Right, and so now, so what you're telling me, Brad, you can't have it both ways, it seems like, well, we don't like that sign now, after 20 years we put it in, yeah, it was, it's an architectural feature, maybe we wouldn't have done it if we thought about it. Uh, well, so that, that is one option then if you want to do it. You're not really getting rid of the sign. You, you're putting something over it. And to me, I, I would say that would classify then as the same sign. You're putting uh, a new sign right on top of that, and you could be backlit, et cetera, uh, that, that you're doing uh, on that. Uh, it, it's there. Uh, as you said, you talked about cornerstones, like down at, at the Bryant Building or at the Charles Building. Reading Cooperative Bank has a cornerstone stamped 1996 in there. Obviously, that's not counted as a sign. So, and, and I did walk around the building, 
And I have to say, I, ca I counted a few more signs than just uh, two signs there. You got the one over the back door. You're coming out the driveway under the new sign. You know, you have a new sign up there. I forget what the name of the firm is. Yeah. And below that, if I'm not mistaken, it's a black sign with white lettering that says uh, Reading Cooperative Bank, 186 Haven Street. Right there as you exit that, uh, the exit, or whatever you want to say, from the rear parking lot onto Haven Street. It's right there. Then you've got the car sign over the doorway. And, and I know you may be splitting hairs and stuff, but you go out to the parking lot and you have two ATMs with uh, quite large signs on the ATMs that say Reading Cooperative Bank with their logo on it and everything. Uh, so uh, if somebody wanted to split hairs or something, uh, you know, it's, I think you have a few more than uh, just, just two signs out there now. So I, I, that was just a, a thought that I had in regards to uh, maybe looking at if, you know, uh, you, you wouldn't even, I think you could go back and talk to Glenn, and maybe you wouldn't even need a variance if you just put a sign over that existing sign. If you're so uh, of want to have a new sign there in the front, I would say, uh, you know, look, maybe look at doing something with the existing car sign then. And uh, you wouldn't even need a variance then. And whether you highlight it with lights, whether you put a whole new sign over it like you have over the back door and just cover up the carved sign, I, I thought that might be an option. Uh, those are my comments on it. Thoughts. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if you have any well, rebuttals. Uh, I yeah. Think, I think the bank has assessed the size and, yeah. and the location it needs for the new sign. So I think from the bank's perspective, and I realize that y you mentioned alternative, I think from the bank's perspective, it's probably just going to have to cover up uh, the carving if relief is yeah. Yeah. And It doesn't really want the sign there. It wants it on the building. I think it's more yeah. visibility. So uh, it, it just seemed wasteful and, and negative to have to obscure that, that carving. That was so. That's that's the whole focus. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it it, it may be, and uh, I agree. And as as you say, you've heard some people here speak tonight that uh, you know it, it is an architectural feature, but it's one that's certainly not noticeable. Probably when you're driving, and you're in a vehicle, and the, the most. Uh, people that would see it probably is only the pedestrians walking down that side of the street. Uh, That's right. I, it's yeah. not noticeable. That's exactly correct. Yeah. The problem is that making it so it's not a sign is going to be a detrimental effect to yeah. the deleterious. Yeah. It, you're going to have, it's, it's going to see you fill in holes, yeah. or fill in carving, or you're going to have a wooden plank that's put over what is otherwise a stone area. I kind of disagree with you there, Brad. Mm -hmm. I don't think the Reading Cooperative Bank is going to put a piece a of wood over plank. No. Oh. I think that you I could match you that today with the uh, mesas out there. They could match that. You wouldn't even see it was there. But I'd hate, I'd hate to lose that. Um, I've talked to some other people um, uh, just about that. Um, and I, I went down a couple of times to look at the sign in the rear. I don't think that's um, a very aesthetic sign to begin with. Um, having it out front, which is what you're asking for, a duplicate sign out yeah. front, it's off-centered from the, from the front of the bank. Um, if you look at what the town has tried to do, or I won't say CPDC, but some of the other people who sat on the zoning recodification, I shouldn't saw it, it wasn't total recodification, but the changes in the bylaw, um, things that um, we've worked on before was uh, streetscape, aesthetically pleasing. Whether it's businesses or residential doesn't make any difference. I would think that the bank would want to make something that is aesthetically pleasing that they're going to be noted for, not just the fact that it has a big sign out there, the max maximizing it with their logo on it. Um, as other board members have said, you know, it may it, it may get the point across, but that's I don't think that's what the bank is looking for. I think what the bank is looking for is something aesthetically pleasing and something over the front door, which would be. Um, 
I shouldn't say the front door, the front entry, yeah. um, that is uh, perhaps backlit and, and think out outside the box. Be creative. You could do it. But I, again, the, the, the bottom line here is what do we do in the future because CPDC is not going to look at this again for another year. So we're going to have at least two other banks and other community, uh, other commercial entities in the community coming forth and looking for additional wall signs. And this this board has been the recipient of all the, all the people who want to change the signs, but can't go through CPDC. They have to come here, and um, our our newest thing is signage. Um, and, and we don't have control over that. I mean, not that we want control over that, but I, if you're looking at it from the, from just as one member of the board who sat the board for many years, I, I want to see, especially signage, something that is aesthetically pleasing for the town of Reading and something that um, is an appropriate streetscape um, representation of the entity that it's representing. some public comments. Sure. We'll open this up to uh, public comments and then we can discuss that. I'll open this up for uh, public comment. Uh, is there anybody from the public who would like to uh, speak, on, uh, speak on this uh, case tonight? And who has been sworn in. And who has been <laughs> sworn in, yes. <laughs> if you haven't been sworn in, I can swear you in. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, seeing nobody from the public is going to comment, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. And I was going to say, Brad, if you wanted a few minutes to discuss it, I mean, I, I think you have a few options. You could withdraw, certainly, as you just noted, without prejudice. You could continue and maybe discuss it and then come back at a later date and withdraw without prejudice. The alternative that you were mentioning doesn't require a variance. The only thing it requires is a variance. Right, variance. exactly. The third sign. They, they've got to put a new sign up. Right. So either they obscure. The uh, sign over the entrance way. So yeah. Either way, it doesn't require that we come back. So that's why. Right. And I, I think I. And, and I realize that, know but I, I don't want to. Where the vote's going to go. Okay. So I just think that the appropriate thing is what's going to That And that is fine. We will certainly uh, vote on that. All I didn't want to feel like doing is ha having you people make a hasty decision tonight. You know, it's something you maybe want to go back and, and discuss a little bit, uh, maybe with other, other members of the uh, bank, etc. Uh, maybe with the sign people, and then come back and say, okay, fine, we continued, but now we're going to withdraw without prejudice. And that certainly can be done via a letter or something. Well, Kim, I have a form here tonight yeah. that we used before for withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, you're going to withdraw without prejudice. Okay, that's that's fine. So that's your request. I think Kim has Kim, a form. Kim might have a form up there that, and if not, we'll, uh, yeah, we, we can uh, go through that. Okay. Let's see. Zoning Board of Appeals. We have a number of them here. Time limits for home. Huh? Mm -hmm. I thought I might have it. I thought we had one. I mean, we. I thought we'd we, used we it might before. have at one time, John, and I, I think you're right, but I'm looking now and I do not see one. We have for agreement to extend the time limits. Right. Yeah. And we have, yeah, that's, and this is for holding agreement to extend time limits. That's, we have enough of those. 
uh, for a special permit and for a uh, variance for both of them extending the time limits. But I do not see a particular one for withdrawal without pledges because I think it, it's just they withdraw it goes into the minutes. Well, it has to. <coughs> it, it needs to be in writing. Somebody needs to sign it. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, I think you can, Brad. Sure. Yeah, that'll be fine. Keep an eye on that. Yeah, I think it's in the form. Yeah. 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 Okay. In the meantime, uh, while Brad's uh, writing his request, we could, uh, I suppose, vote on it. Mm -hmm. We do have a request before the board on case number 1515 uh, to allow them to withdraw without prejudice. Uh, is there a request? Uh, any uh, comments from board members on that? If not, no. I would entertain a motion uh, from somebody to uh, honor the applicant's request. I we would uh, move to grant the petitioner's request to withdraw without prejudice from their request for a variance on case 15-15 to install additional wall signage in excess okay. of Thank you, Brad. that required by the current zoning bylaw. Okay. Second that. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further comments? No comments from board members? All those in favor of the motion to allow withdrawal without prejudice? Five zero zero. Okay, thank you. Be a short one. Uh, let's see, sitting. Thank you so much for your patience. And uh, second item on the agenda tonight is case number 1513. Uh, uh, the parties here for that tonight? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. Let me go ahead and read the uh, legal notice and we'll proceed from there. will hold a public hearing in the selectmen's meeting room at the Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Thursday, December 17th, 2015, at 7 p.m. On the petition of Salvatore and Linda Russo, 
who seek a special permit under sections 7.37.3.2 of the zoning bylaws in order to add a 23 foot by 24 foot two story garage with a room above and to remodel the existing apartment as per plans on the property located at 55 Hancock Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before the board is taken under oath. So if you think you may want to speak tonight on this case, please stand and raise your right hand. Okay, very good. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Responses I do. Okay, thank you. Uh, floor is yours if you'd like to make a presentation. Okay. My name's Linda Russo. This is my husband, Sal. Um, this property is very important to my family. We've um, owned it. My father purchased it in 1955, 60 years ago. Then my husband and I purchased it from him in 1978. We raised our children there. And now a new generation, my son-in-law Aaron and my daughter Kara, are planning on purchasing it next year. Um, they, we've all come to love this homestead and that's how we refer to it. We would like to add a two car garage and increase the size of the apartment to better accommodate my husband and myself. We are here because the house which is over 120 years old, I'm not exactly sure how old it is, does not sit on the lot perfectly. However, the proposed addition does comply with the current setback laws. And we feel that this addition would not only be beneficial to us, but also to the neighborhood and not in any way be detrimental to the neighborhood. If you have any questions, we can try to answer them. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Uh, I will go ahead then. And uh, we, as I said before, we had a uh, memorandum from uh, the Code Enforcement Officer Glenn Redman in regards to the cases tonight. His comment on this particular case is case number 1513. This proposal is to add additional area to an existing non-conforming structure. Section 7.3.2 states that the Zoning Board of Appeals may grant a special permit to reconstruct, extend, alter, or structurally change a non-conforming building or structure upon a finding that such a construction, extension, alteration, or structural change shall not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming building or structure. This proposal will meet the current setbacks and lot coverage. I do not have any concerns with this proposal. Mr. Red. Uh, we'll start with Eric on this uh, case. Uh, any comments? Uh, uh, questions on this, Eric? Property located in Zoning District S15 that mm -hmm. is legal non-conforming, both with respect to setbacks and to use. It's a two-family, um, but I was going through the records, and I think the oldest date I could find was maybe 1954. And in the year built section, it simply said old. So I'm prepared <laughs> to take the town on its word that it was built a long time ago. And there's also a letter in there from the um, Inspectional Services Department indicating that it is a legal two family. Uh, I think your application is relatively straightforward. Of course, you know, as, as Bob mentioned, the, um, the standard is, is this more detrimental than what's there? Uh, where you are going to be building, as you've pointed out, complies with all the side setbacks. I think from the street, it's set back far enough from the street and is, uh, I don't think that it would be, I don't think you could distinguish it as having been built 100 years ago versus what you're planning to do next year. So I, I find it to be a straightforward project. I don't have anything else to add. 
Thank you, Eric. Uh, Sai. Couldn't have said it better than what Eric did. I think it's a very straightforward, totally compliant uh, proposal. And I think it's very interesting that you've, the, you've used up pretty much the 25% lot coverage <laughs> requirement. <laughs> okay. Good thinking. Thanks, no further comments. Okay. John. Um, I was looking at how you're going to um, redo the uh, resulting structure. So <clears throat> I was looking for the number of rooms in the, I called it unit one and unit two. I don't know which is unit one and which is unit two. One appears to be um, the second floor uh, of the um, front of the structure. Unit one. Or two. It doesn't. We always refer to it as unit one as being the first floor and the front of the second floor. And unit two is the apartment. We've always referred to it as the back of the upstairs mm -hmm. of the second floor, the back of the second floor. So, in either one, um, how many total rooms are there in unit one and unit two? Existing. Existing. There's only three in the apartment. Three. Mm -hmm. And there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in unit one. Okay. I couldn't find the bedrooms either, so how many bedrooms? There's I, three I, bedrooms on the second floor of unit one, one bedroom on the third floor, and then in the apartment, unit two, there's, there's one. one. So there's four in the first unit and one in the second. Yes. And and right now you only have the two kitchens, one and one. Oh yes, yes. yes. Two kitchens. Okay, and the square footage uh, is lo much larger, it's more than twice. Yes. In unit yeah, one yes as it, it is. is. In unit two. Yeah. When we get the proposed structure built and whatever, how many units will be? How many rooms will be in unit one again? The same. same. Unit 1 will stay the same. Unit 2, the apartment, will actually be a great room, so it'll be a kitchen opened into a big, mm -hmm. uh, a great room, so one, two, it actually it, it'll three stay rooms. three rooms. It'll stay bedroom, oh, kitchen, great room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So basically the same number. Yes, yeah. the yeah. number of rooms is The not square changed. footage has yeah. absolutely changed. changed. Yes. Uh, I was just having trouble trying to follow that on the on the uh, the documents that were uh, presented, but other than that, um, I like uh, the other two members of the board before me uh, see it as a relatively straightforward. I mean, um, it's non-conforming be because of a number of different things: frontage. Um, the um, sides have side, the one side, yeah. um, <coughs> which I the, the north uh, westerly side, right? Um, but the res the resulting um, changes in the structure are going to be on the uh, opposite side, so there's plenty of room there, um, and we're not changing the. Sometimes it, it looks like you, you have an apartment or you have a, a second living unit and um, what happens is uh, people want to build above their garage and uh, that, that which is above the garage becomes a third unit. I, I already heard you. Okay. okay. So I don't, I don't see that as, as being a, a situation down the road. So I have no questions. Okay. Thank you. Kathleen. I have nothing to add. Right. Further. Uh, I, I think the fellow board members have uh, spelled it out. I won't go into it in great depth. Uh, again, like Eric said, legal non-conforming lot. It's been there a long time. Actually well-maintained. I think it's certainly a plus to the neighborhood. Nice Victorian house there. And uh, I think, uh, you know, the addition itself uh, for outward appearances is all going to take place on the... Uh, uh, 
southeasterly side. Uh, all new addition, everything else is, uh, that'll meet all setbacks. I do not see any uh, increase in nonconformity on it, so I, I have no issues with this uh, particular case. Uh, and, and again, I, you know, in this particular case, we find that uh, for a special permit that uh, it certainly will not be a substantial detriment to the neighborhood, the uh, new addition uh, on that. I think it, it will be fine, yeah. Uh, I will open it up for public comment. Anybody uh, from the public would like to comment on this, feel free. Yes, if you could state your name and uh, address, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're actually on the side that will be looking at this addition. Oh. And are fully in support of We've done a great job with the house. It's been a labor of love, and we've watched it for years, and I'm so happy that it will be approved. Very good. Thank you. You got that, Kim? The, uh, uh, yeah, comment on that. Yeah. Uh, no further comments. I'll close the public portion of the uh, meeting, and uh, if there's any further comments from board members, and if not, I would entertain a motion on this particular case uh, uh, for a special permit. Maybe. I wrote it up. Oh. <laughs> I'll save you the stuff. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board grant the petitioner Salvatore Russo's request for a special permit pursuant to Reading Bylaw 7.3.2 in order to add a 23 by 24 foot two story garage with a room above it and to remodel the existing apartment as per plans on the property located at 55 Hancock Street, Reading, Mass. All in accordance with a plot plan dated September 24th, 2015, prepared and certified by John D. Sullivan III, professional engineer, PO Box 2004, Woolver, Mass, 01888, and depicted on architectural drawings, sheets noted as A-0, A-1, and A-4, prepared by Stephen Baxek, architect, 44 Glenmore Circle, Reading, Mass, 1867, all dated August 24th, 2015, and certified by Stephen uh, Baxek, registered architect, all submitted with petitioner's application for special permit. Special permit is conditioned upon the following. One, the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundational plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Two, the petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as-built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit. And three, as-built plans showing the completed construction of the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector immediately after work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Okay, thank second. you. Eric. We have a second. Do, do you want to add in there? Um, by making the finding that the, according to the 6732, that um, such construction um, will not substantially be more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming building construction. I will add a finding to that effect as well, John. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I'll second that too. You'll second it. Very good, thank you. No further questions. All those in favor of the motion? Okay. 500, you have, yeah, your special permit is granted. Uh, usually it takes us a couple of weeks to uh, write that up. Give us, uh, you know, uh, two weeks, 14 days, and uh, that'll be filed with the town clerk. And then there's a 20 day appeal period, and then it has to be filed at the uh, Registry of Deeds, the special permit. And I will. You noted the, Eric, let me just double check. The architectural plans, right? You did make note of those. I will stamp those as approved and you can have a copy of those tonight. Okay. Now, do you need to you want to give them back a stamp copy of the certified plan? Yes, I will give them both. Okay. Yeah. Thirteen. Okay. <laughs> yep. 
Don't leave yet. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna give you those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> from like 1950 something. Ah. I have one picture of what it looked like. But it's yeah. been. <laughs> I'd love to know how, um, how old it really is, but I've never really done it. Sure. Ben Nichols, do you know Ben? Really? He used to tell me it was 1845. Real? But okay. The other houses on my street, I think I'm more like 1880, 1890. Yes, I would think the Historical my, Commission might have some work into something. I've got a house on West Street. New post, yeah, really. And his house was built in 1888. And it's very different because it has a daisy on all four sides. And I swear that's why people have to come to this one. Good job. This is the same new post as our house. I see. You might, okay. you might find either in the basement or some if it if it did have an out an accessory structure up there. Mm -hmm. That there is a stamp someplace with the date of construction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my house has got one in the barn and one in the house. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, well, the the barn, see, the funny thing is, not to my memory, I was one and a half when my father bought it, but there was a barn that was attached right where we planned to put the garage. Uh -huh. And an older neighbor, that he'd be in his hundred now. Mr. Riley, when we bought it in 1978, told us that story, that he remembers being a kid and there was a barn and there was a fire in the barn and they just cut it off yeah. and closed up the wall. And that's what happened. <laughs> I bet you, I, I bet you it was in the barn because that's was. where they yeah. put yeah, it all. It always was. put it because that's yeah. always the second structure yeah. they built. Yeah. Uh, but if you had a fire, they probably took it down and that's right. disappeared. Well, that's where it went. Rose here lives next door, and it's a funny neighborhood. There's nine people that live on Park Street, and the little corner of Woodbine Street, that we all grew up on. And we live there again. Wow. Oh. Then we may not all live in the house we grew up in, but we bought one when it came on the market. But there's nine. It's uncanny. Yeah. It's kind of weird. So you're going to extend the process. Yeah, I know you're going <laughs> to. Yeah. Very Actually, good. Yeah. Speak, so said, Please don't make the Russo's move. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Thank Thank you. Good okay. luck with you. Yes. Okay. Good luck. Uh, that's, I think, all the business we have on the agenda tonight. We, I know we have some minutes we've gotten recently, and we'll catch those the next meeting. Okay. Uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor. Very good. Thank you so much. Awesome.